Hey teachers, welcome back to my office, my studio, and the vlog. It has been forever since I've joined you all for a, you know, routine vlog, a weekly thing. It's been an insane few months. Uh, we had a lot of things going on at the end of 2018 with family stuff. It's just been an insane time for our family in general. And then I unplugged for Christmas break while Trisha and the kids were home. I, I did absolutely zero work and, and I don't feel bad about that because I spent some time with them. So I'm excited for a new year, 2019 is here and I'm excited to kick this series back off again, uh, our dollar store teacher challenge. So last weekend I was in California presenting at the California Kindergarten Association Conference and it was so much fun. Had a blast with those teachers there. So thank you to my friend Palma for inviting me out to that and everyone at CKA for your fabulous, fabulous conference and especially to all you California teachers who showed so much hospitality and appreciation for us presenters that were there. It, it was a blast. And um, today's challenge is something that I've done in my classroom before and uh, we're gonna talk about it today because I get asked about it all the time when I have this set up, what you're gonna see here, at conferences on the table and I talk about it during my sessions. So I thought I'd share with all of you who can't make it to one of my play-based learning sessions and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go over that now because this is all from the Dollar Tree. But this activity is something you can put together for as little as like $2. Um, I added some extra stuff too to kind of show you what it is and, and kind of how I added some flair to it, I guess. But this was an idea that originally developed uh, together with my good friend Kim Adsit when we were at Dollar Tree one time and then I've taken it and kind of ran with it. But uh, it involves things that you won't find in the teacher aisle, but things that you'll find in the pet aisle at Dollar Tree. So the first thing is just a dog food dish. I found this dog food dish at Dollar Tree for a dollar. It's a pretty good sized dog food dish. Uh, it's got the bones around the outside. Nice sturdy plastic. I've traveled with this in my suitcase to conferences time and time again and it's made its way through the airport, airport pretty durable. So I know it will last with your little ones as well. And then this has absolutely no value to this game or this activity other than storing these and, and it matches. So if I picked up a dog food, or I guess it's like a dog treat dish um, to store these Q-tips in that we'll talk about soon. So they match and it looks great in a center. So how do I use this in my classroom? Well, that involves all of these Q-tips, right? So we put the Q-tips in the dog food container or the dog food dish, and these are no longer Q-tips, these are bones. And I know you guys have done bone activities around Halloween or different times when you're building skeletons or body parts to, to use Q-tips as the bones because they work perfect for that. Well, we're gonna use it as a counting activity and so much more during this. So the first time I did this activity was around Halloween and I had a black dog food dish and um, we made, and I had some like skeleton hand tongs that we used that were for like salad uh, tongs and we made tally marks using skeleton bones, right? So all the kids did was they reached in the bowl, oh, they sell these little things at Dollar Tree too. We reached in the bowl and we pulled out some uh, Q-tips or bones and then whatever number the students pull out, they had to try to build tally marks using those Q-tips only. <laughs> And then they had to write down or record down how many tally marks they made, what that number was, and so on and so on and so on. The kids loved it, right? Then we started doing it with just rolling dice and counting out that many. And then we started rolling two dice, adding together, counting out that many. Then we started rolling one dice, right? So we roll one die, we roll it out, count out that many, then we roll another one, and we talk about how many are left. So now this has become an addition subtraction game as well, right? These are also sold at Dollar Tree. You can get giant foam dice there, as well as the dice that are dry erase. So for under, let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, if you want to include the container, six bucks, I got all of this stuff to put together this station that can be used for counting, tally marks, addition, subtraction. And then I thought of this one today too. One of the things that I had in my classroom that my kids absolutely love to use were alphabet dice, right? Or you could use this guy and write letters on here or sight words on here, right? So now we're gonna roll alphabet dice, maybe we roll an M and the kids have to pull out Q-tips and build the letter M or the letter A or the letter Z, whatever it may be. <laughs> or they have to build a word that starts with that letter, yeah? Or we roll this and we roll out sight words and they have to practice building sight words. <laughs> 
There are so many possibilities that you can do with this. It is, it is endless. So that's the challenge this week. I've given you some ideas. I want to know in the comments below, share how you would use this dog food dish, Q-tips his bones, and dice or whatever it may be to use this as an educational activity in a center where the kids are working on their own. I've given you the tally marks, the counting, the addition, the subtraction, and the sight words and letter building. So uh, I challenge you, how are you gonna use this in your classroom? I, I wanna see what you come up with it and share that in the comments below. I'd love to see that, I really, really would. Um, moving on, I really wanna thank you guys for the support over the past few months. I am presenting like crazy right now, so make sure you visit sde.com, that's who I'm presenting with sde.com to find out where I'll be, if I'm gonna be in your area presenting, or if you can't make it to one of those conferences, reach out to me and see how we can work out a deal for me to come to your school, because I'd love to do that. I absolutely love working with teachers in their classrooms and building that relationship and doing this kind of stuff. One of my favorite things to talk about is play-based learning. I have a full day workshop on just that, how we put a play-based learning into effect in your classroom, and I love working with teachers in their rooms to do that. So if that's an opportunity your school has to reach out to me and we can set up something for me to come to your school and put on that workshop, I would love to do so. Other than that, make sure you're sharing, hashtagging everything Teachers Learn To and the Dollar Store Teacher Challenge to see what you guys are up to with this activity in your classroom. I really, really want to see what you guys come up with because this, this is a lot of fun. It, re it really is. So make sure you're sharing that and comment below as to how you're adapting this with your students. Again, this was six bucks, including all that stuff, but if you've got dice, if you've got a storage container, this is really only gonna cost you a couple dollars, maybe only a dollar because a lot of teachers have these Q-tips anyway, but uh, share it out. Please make sure you click that red button to subscribe, share it with your teacher friends and parents who wanna do this activity at home, and just thank you, thank you, thank you for the continued support, and I hope to see some of you on the road soon. I'll talk to you soon, guys, bye.